Hey, Ben Baxter here back in the Angler's All Fly Tying Studio. Today we're gonna tie up the Mantis Shrimp for you. All right, so we're starting with a TMCO 811S. This one's in a size two. First thing we're gonna be tying on is some bead chain eyes in a size large. We are using a UTC 140 thread in tan. Just get my thread started real quick before I tie in those bead chains. Trim my tag there. One thing I've found interesting is people tend to comment on flies like this. Why do you have two sets of eyes? Because we will have eyes for the shrimp itself here in a moment. These are referred to as bead chain eyes but they are not actually meant to be eyes on the fly. They are really just for weight. Okay, we've got those tied in. We're gonna advance our thread to the back of the hook here. I'm not really worried about covering the hook all pretty because that's all gonna get covered anyways. So I'm just past the beginning of the bend of the hook there. Um, first thing I'm going to tie in is some craft fur. We've pre cut a piece out here, or a chunk. One thing I, I would like to show you all of this I mean, it's not really fur, but it's synthetic. But these are kind of like guard hairs in natural animals and what I'm doing is pulling all that out. I'm going to use that for my dubbing. Next thing I'm going to do, see how I've got a lot of those long fibers there. I'm going to kind of even all of those out. So I'm going to pull the tips and then stack them back so the tips are a little more even. One more time. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of helps keep the, the horn of this shrimp a little cleaner once you get it tied in. And you can always add, if you feel like you don't have enough, you can always add a little more. Do that one more time. It's just kind of a, a layering technique. I might actually add a little more onto this. But the horn is about the length of the body here. So essentially the back of the hook is going to be the front of our fly on this one. So we're kind of, if we were tying this fly the other direction, this would be our tail, but this is actually going to be the little horn on the front of a, a shrimp. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that in there and kind of use that to give my body a little bit of bulk. Just trim that out. I'll take one more small clump here. I feel like I can get more volume in that horn than what I've got right now. Same thing, I'm just pulling the synthetic guard hairs out of this craft fur. And again, just taking that and kind of aligning the tips again. That's good enough right there. So same thing, I'm just gonna crank that in there. I'll even start back here, just wrap that whole thing forward. And I like that because when you see the end result of this fly it looks a little more realistic with the, the horn sitting like that as opposed to straight off the back and you'll see what I mean here once we get this whole fly finished I'll flip it back over and it just looks a little more realistic clean that up a little bit
If you wanted to, you could bar that right there. Just take a marker and put some barring in it. But the original, I believe, did not have that. Next, I'm going to take a little clump of some rabbit fur. I'm just going to cut it straight off of the hide and then tie it in. So I'll just have a little clump of rabbit fur here and we're going to tie that in. One to, to just give this a little more bulk there and this will also give our fly a little more movement up front. Wrap that back, kind of help with the taper on this body once we start dubbing it as well. Clean that up a smidge. Now I'm going to take a little bit of our guard hairs. I'm going to make a tiny little bump up front here. You'll see why in a second. So I've got some Puglisi pre-made crab shrimp eyes. You can make these yourself out of just melting some 25, 30 pound mono, but these make life a little easier. I've got a really long tag on it, as you can see, so I'm gonna trim off some of that, about half of it. So I've got about that much, and I'm gonna figure out about how far I want those eyes to stick forward and kind of pick my spot here right behind that bump of dubbing. I'm just taking some hemos and just smashing that flat. And I'm gonna trim off right behind that. We've got about half of an inch that I can tie in there, and that's really all I need. You can leave some length on that if you want to kind of help bulk up the body, but it's not necessary. Just tying one in on this side. Do the same on the other side. I like my eyes to stick out a little ways, so you can kind of maneuver them to go up or down or whichever direction you'd like them to kind of sit on the fly. So get that lined up again. one in on this side. Get that all lined up, really lash those guys in there. Next, I'm gonna tie in some legs here. I'm just using a silly leg and a amber with some flake in it. So I'm just gonna fold this around my thread. And I'm using my hands as kind of a, a tricky technique, but once you get it figured out, it's really not too challenging. I'm, I'm holding 
both pieces separately so they will lay on either side of the fly here. And I'll trim my legs when I'm done. So you don't have to worry about doing that. You can trim them now if you want, it's up to you. Adding some more of that under fur for another segment of the body here. And if you wanted, sometimes on my flies, if you really want some segmentation before you do this dubbing ball or even right after you do the eyes, you can tie in a piece of mono that you can later, once you're at the end of the fly, you can use that to kind of rib the body. But for original pattern's sake, I am not doing that. You also could use some little pieces of black uh, crystal flash or midge flash for some kind of feeler antenna looking pieces there also. Um, but again, just kind of trying to stick to the original on this one for you. Another set of legs here. And same thing, we're just kind of pinning that. And you almost want to pin it a little back behind that dubbing ball so you can really wrap forward on it and really help separate those legs before you get to the final forward completed tie-in point. So those are done. Throwing in some more of the under fur here. I got a little more than I need. That's good. I'm gonna kind of go in front of both of those legs just to kind of help fill that body in a little bit. And I'll just go, I could add a little more dubbing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tie in the last set of rubber legs here, or silly legs. And again, as you can see, I'm kind of reaching a little back with my thread, so that allows me to have some space. Come on, leg. There we go. As I said, that's a little, takes a little time to get to figure this technique out. But like I was saying, I, I, I'm starting a little further back so I have time to wrap forward and really help separate those legs on, on either side of the hook shank here. Clean those up. Take a little more under fur here from the craft fur. That's one of the nice things. I know craft fur can be messy, but you're really using all of it here instead of leaving all those guard hairs in your tying basket. And they just want to connect and collect on everything. It can be very messy. But I like that this really is what, four materials and some bead chain eyes and you're done. It's a very simple fly, but it looks very realistic. And kind of tapering this as I go, you'll kind of be able to see that in the finished piece here. Once I get back behind those bead chains, you'll see what I mean. That's another thing about this fly, is it doesn't have to be super pretty. I mean, it's really just kind of a profile. I mean, there's a lot of other bonefish shrimp imitations that are way more generic than this one. It just kind of takes on its own realistic look and is still very simple to tie, which I can appreciate. I do like my fancy realistic looking flies too, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to saltwater flies, sometimes you don't have to overthink things. And we're just gonna whip finish right there. Just do a double, because again, I'm not using glue. It's 
part of the confidence of your own flies is you can do whatever you want with them, not add glue, add glue. So, here are our legs. I'm gonna trim them right about the length of the horn, maybe a little less than that. And there you have it. That is the mantis shrimp. Thanks for watching. Check us out on YouTube, like, subscribe, Instagram, hit the notification button and keep an eye out for the next couple videos.